Jake Paul has got to be the dumbest, cockiest, stupidest, most egotistical person in the social media sphere. But that's what makes him so damn successful. There's this ever-present narrative which seems to be especially common on YouTube where we hate some of the most successful creators simply because they're successful. Our brain tricks us into thinking that we dislike them because they've got a big ego or they don't deserve their success, but much of the time we are simply ignorant to the fact that it is because their very existence paints each and every one of us in a dim light. Jake Paul is one of these individuals, no doubt about it. It's so immediately tempting to hate him, and I'm guilty of this as well. He's such an easy punching bag to hook into. However, the sad truth is that in the process of tearing him down, we discard one of the most fundamental principles of success. Imitate those who have had success themselves. While it's unlikely that in 200 years time, they'll look back on Jake Paul as this generation's Van Gogh, I'm trying to make the case that behind Jake Paul's egotistical facade, the man is a genius. There are numerous examples to be examined when looking at his recent behavior, especially in his fights. But Jake Paul is so good at what he does that we've been eating up his same obvious yet subtle growth strategy dating all the way back to 2016, where Jake Paul started to realize that people would talk about him in the mainstream media if he did one simple thing. Go out of his way to be an insufferable moron. When considering Jake Paul's infamous line being 5 mil on YouTube in 6 months never done before, and he did so through being this insufferable douchebag, perhaps this taught him from the very beginning that this was the best strategy for growing his social media presence. And honestly, what incentive would he have to change it? If you made the fastest growing channel in the history of YouTube, you're going to keep doing whatever helped you to achieve that fast growth, regardless of whether or not people hate you for it. And not only are you going to continue it, you're going to escalate it with the goal of getting more and more media coverage, which is exactly what Jake Paul started to get good at. With his escalation in douchey behavior, Jake Paul would go ahead and release the infamous classic It's Every Day Bro with a not so all-star cast, including some of the biggest white boy douchebags known to the internet. While the video could easily be dismissed as the most brain dead piece of lyrical garbage ever uploaded to the platform, this move was calculated and far from arbitrary. The magic and skill involved in this video was that it simultaneously appealed as entertainment for his younger audience, while setting it at the perfect level of stupidity for older YouTubers to publicly discuss how bad it was. Now Jake Paul could have just gone all out with a cringe and made it easier for other YouTubers to pick on it, but if he made it too obvious, people would have sensed that he was only making it to get people to react to it, ultimately less the intended effect. Jake Paul subtly sprinkled in almost nonsensical lyrics which flowed with the song, but were also obviously going to be picked apart by other larger YouTubers. England is my city, drop some new merch and it's selling like a god church. Is that your boy's cologne? These were among the classic lines that we all remember, but how do we remember them? Well, because Jake's strategy worked perfectly and the video was talked about in almost every media avenue that you can imagine. You don't need to say you're a white boy, dog. You don't need to put that in the lyrics. This is the white music video ever made. Every day bro, Disney Channel Flow! I'm gonna be watching It's Every Day Bro for 10 hours straight. Things you should never rap about. Taxes. Uh, Disney Channel. Never ever rap about the Disney Channel. And this is Jake Paul's talent. It's setting things at the perfect level of subtle stupidity. Just at that sweet spot where it causes people to talk about him without them getting to the point of saying, yeah, but you can tell he's only doing it so people talk about him more. It led him to gain more than 250 million views on It's Everyday Bro, and more than 15 million views on his less infamous Buy That Merch song where he employed a similar douchey tactic. But why the difference between 250 million and 15 million? Well, perhaps the the reason why that merch didn't perform nearly as well as its everyday bro was because he didn't nail the subtle stupidity in buy that merch. As summed up by one of the top comments sarcastically stating, I love how subtle this is. This might also be supported by a tweet stating, sorry Kendrick, I'll let you have your spot back when the Jake Ballers are done, which was clearly a joke, therefore inviting less YouTubers to buy it and cover the stupidity. It was too obvious. But maybe I'm still being overly harsh on the point about being too obvious. There was one situation that fell under the category of too obvious obviously fake, which provided Jake Paul with an estimated $600 million in media value. Remember the Tana Mojo Jake Paul wedding? Once again, another one of the dumbest things ever done by two YouTubers. It was obviously fake and set up in a way so that it wouldn't be permanent, especially when the celebrant went on to fight someone in the crowd turning it into a complete comedy, but it didn't stop a media crew in the hundreds from showing up to document it. And while I certainly agree that Shrek's wedding was more entertaining than this, unfortunately Shrek's wedding didn't provide him with $600 million 
dollars worth of exposure, so who's the real winner here? However, the problem with being involved in controversy after controversy after controversy is that every time it occurs, it has slightly less punch than the previous time. After a while, you just go, yep, it's Jake Paul doing his provocative thing again. So from Jake Paul's end, what's the solution? The controversies need to escalate and become more extreme in order for them to be covered. Another reason for why he needed to escalate the severity of his controversial events was because Jake Paul's popularity was in decline as the vlogging phase was coming to an end. Take for example the Arizona looting incident from June 2020 when Jake Paul was spotted going into a smashed up shopping mall in a video uploaded to the internet. Now Jake Paul is a multi-millionaire who's not going to waste his time running around the streets taking $50 shirts from local stores, but here's how the story apparently goes. Jake Paul was having dinner in a restaurant next door to the looting. He was at a dinner that was next to the mall and decided to get his own videographer to film the incident which resulted in the accidental filming of Jake Paul being involved in the looting. Now perhaps Jake Paul was looting because he was simply too stupid to think about whether or not it would cause a public image meltdown and instead thought getting involved in the looting would just be a little bit of fun. But this proves our initial point even further. We can't tell if it's deliberate or not. Everyone just assumes it's Jake Paul being a dumbass and that's what gets people talking. Even if this was just Jake Paul being an idiot, we can assume that he at least unconsciously saw this as somewhat of an opportunity as he likely understood that he was going to get media coverage for being involved in such a controversial issue. Although it's very unfortunate, it's also very on brand for Jake Paul to magically be seen at a looting site. In this video where Logan Paul discussed Jake Paul's looting, there are numerous comments talking about how Logan Paul matured while Jake did not. However, many fail to understand that it seems to be in Jake Paul's best interest not to mature, but I could be wrong with this. His channel has seen a massive decline in viewership, and perhaps this has in part come from his refusal to drop his ego and mature his content. However, this creates another question. Is being a YouTuber even his main occupation anymore, or is he better referred to as a boxer. With his dive into the world of boxing, this method of seeking controversy seems to be one of the primary strategies for publicity. Now, I'll preface this part by saying that I know absolutely nothing about boxing or the UFC, and therefore I have about as much knowledge as the next guy who's watched two episodes of Joe Rogan and suddenly thinks they're ready to be an octagon commentator. My opinion is completely uninformed in this area. But when looking at a character like Conor McGregor, talking smack and being provocative seems to be a part of the game. When Conor McGregor's leg broke in that big race, and fight, you can see him on the ground still trying to talk smack to the opponent despite his inability to walk. Your wife is in me DMs, hey baby, hit me back on my chat he has a reputation for being provocative, and as a result, there are multiple compilations of such on YouTube with millions of views each. Now, as many have pointed out, Jay Paul seems to be somewhat of a Conor McGregor copycat, and honestly, why not? If being provocative works for someone fairly uncontroversial like Conor McGregor, imagine how much free publicity Jake Paul, who's already far more controversial, would receive if he's just as provocative as someone like Conor McGregor. Given his past on YouTube as discussed earlier in the video, it's really no surprise that Jake Paul took this douchey provocative approach back back in 2018 before his first fight against Deji. Deji, UK's biggest mistake. Are you sure about that? And of course he took this approach. Again, I'm going to speculate here, but I'd assume that in a fighting sport, the goal is to build as much tension as possible before the fight. Therefore, there's much more at stake in the actual fight, giving the audience more of a reason to watch, ultimately bringing in more money for each fighter. Plus, in a natural situation, the basis for a fight is that there's hostility between two individuals. If there's no pre-fight hostility, is it even a fight? KSI and Logan Paul took the same approach of trash talk, despite the two being arguably more respectable than Jake Paul. Who's excited to see me knock this bitch out on November? Night. Yeah, I think so. Hey, even your fans want me to knock you out. And when considering the previous point about Conor McGregor, maybe being provocative is simply the most accepted attitude for the sport. In which case, you might argue that Jake Paul is perfect for the boxing scene. Perhaps YouTube was never really where he was supposed to be, and was therefore an intermediary while he found something more suited to his personality. Now with all of this in mind, it would make sense as to why he made this infamous video at the start of the year attempting to get Conor McGregor to fight him. It had all of the Jake Paul boxes ticked. Provocative, douchey script, douchey outfit, all of the right ingredients for getting people to talk about it in the social media sphere. Plus, Jake Paul is very intelligent when it comes to picking who he wants to fight. If we look at three out of his four professional fights, they're all former champions or professionals in a similar but different sport, are in their late 30s and likely haven't had a big mainstream opportunity like this in some period of time. This really makes it a win-win for both competitors. Jake Paul gets to fight someone who he can label as a former champion, which looks good on his record and in the promotion of the fight, while the opponent gets a big mainstream opportunity and payout 
regardless of whether they win or lose. Plus, there's really not that much downside anyway if they do lose because people recognize that boxing isn't even their main sport. Now, you could easily dismiss this as Jake Paul cherry picking the opponents that he knows he's gonna beat. However, you could also call it intelligent marketing or promotion. So like with all things in life, the way you interpret it depends on whether you like the guy or not. The overall problem with determining whether or not Jake Paul's behavior is intelligent is that you simply can't make a judgment if we've never seen a nice or humble version of Jake Paul. You always see comments along the lines of, Jake Paul would be so much more likable if he was humble. Yeah, cool. In other news, water is still wet. But if he were humble, would his channel be as successful? Would his boxing career be less successful? Would he have made as much money during his peak? Well, thankfully, there is somewhat of an example, his brother. In our video discussing how Logan Paul fixed his reputation, becoming more humble did wonders for his popularity. Could Jake Paul follow a similar path to save his declining channel?